Okay, well, another Ames PWR INV 5036W. That's a 36 volt input, 5000 watt max output stepped sine wave inverter. It's actually not another one, it's a comeback. I worked on this a few months ago and I believe the customer used it. Everything was okay, then it quit once again. So I'll try to link a description to the previous repair up here right there in the video and let's go ahead and power this thing up and see what it does okay so i have power applied and when i hit the power switch i get absolutely nothing no indicator whatsoever so looking at the current meter right here i've got it set to almost 40 volts and i see just a little blip and it's not overloading the power supply at all this is my B and K 1601. It's good for up to 50 volts at two amps, only two amps. Now I use my other power supply right here, which is good for 30 volts up to 10 amps. I should upgrade, but not in the cards right now. Just a blip, that's all I get. Okay, check the fuses on the master side of the inverter. That one's good. That one is open. That one is open. That one is good. Open. 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 And open. Unless I get zero ohms, that fuse is blown. Like this one right here. Zero ohms. That's good. This one right here. And I don't even get a reading whatsoever on this thing. They were just charging, so 316 ohms. That fuse is toast. Well, let's move on to the slave side. All right, here is the slave side. Open. 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 Open, open, I should be saying blown. Open and open. Are my leads gone bad? Nope, leads are good. Oh dear, that is not good. Oh, well, let's go ahead and pull these halves apart and check some parts. Well, one of these FETs has left the chat. It's an FTP 23N10A, and yeah, it is grenaded. In fact, I think, yeah, I don't know where the piece went, but it was laying over here. And yeah, it's not there right now. So anyhow, one of these FETs, like I said, has left the chat. So let's go into a diode check between the source and the drain to see what we get here. Short, 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 and this one should be, wait, that's not the blown open one, short. Okay, on to the other side. Uh, that one's good. Is that the good fuse? That is a good fuse. And these are two that I did change. Not shorted. Not shorted. Short. I'm sure that one is shorted. Remember, these are in a push-pull configuration. So if one shorts, it'll probably show up on the other one as a short as well. And I did change these. That one's a good one. And this is the one that is grenaded. And of course it checks good because I'm probably measuring that one right there. So let's go ahead and check the output transistors right now and see what they look like. Okay, these are the output transistors, the output FETs, not shorted, not shorted, not shorted and not shorted. The only thing I care about right now is shorts. 
not YouTube shorts, but actual shorts. So I see a diode junction that way, open that way, diode junction, open, diode junction, open, diode junction, and open. So I'm happy with that. But unfortunately, I only have six of these replacement FETs, the FTP23N10As. So I'm going to have to order some more, unfortunately. That's just on the master side. Let's look at the slave side next. Okay, on to checking the output FETs on the slave side. So once again, I only care about shorts. Diode junction, good. Charging, that's perfectly fine. Diode junction, great. Diode junction, diode junction. So I can say the four FETs on the slave and the master board outputs are good. Let's go ahead and check the DC to DC driver FETs now on the slave board. Short, 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 short. Wow, every one of those is bad. Short, 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 and short. Wow, that's really bad. So just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and check the gate drive resistors. We'll do it from one gate to a second gate. I should see 20 ohms, 15, 16, 15. Maybe that's okay because of the shorted. Oh, wait, no, wrong one. Sorry, my bad. 20 ohms, that's perfect. 20 ohms, that's perfect. And 20 ohms, that's perfect. Now on to this side. Uh, 20 ohms, perfect. 20 ohms, perfect. 20 ohms, perfect. 15 ohms, a little low. 14 ohms, a little low, and 17 ohms, a little low. So what I'm actually doing is I'm measuring these resistors. They're 10 ohms each. So that one is 8.1. Now it might be a result of a shorted FET causing the low resistance value. That one's perfect. This one is going to be low. I can tell you right now, 8.6. And that one is perfect again. 10 ohms. 8.4. This one is going to be 10 ohms. I know it right now. And this one is going to be in the 8 ohm range once again. 9, sorry, 9.4 ohms. So at a minimum, this thing is going to need 32 driver FETs. I'm not going to leave one untouched. So the output FETs appear to be okay. So I'm not sure what happened. Wow, it's really strange that all these FETs failed and it blew all these fuses except for like two of them. And if you look back at the first part of this video, you'll remember right here is where I found arcing. And I cleaned that off and it looks perfect right now. Let's zoom in on that. So remember in the first part of this video when I repaired this almost a year ago, this is what I found to be the original issue. This had gotten moist and it began arcing. You can actually see the copper balls on it right there. 
and so I went ahead and scraped it clean. There's plenty of isolation right now and no more signs of arcing whatsoever, but something happened with this unit. So at a minimum, it's going to need 32 driver FETs and I'm not even sure if the FET driver transistors are in good shape, I need to do a diagnosis on that, but I wanna see if the customer wants to move forward with this. I can't warranty the repair that I did because there is so much more wrong at this point. So we'll see what the customer has to say down the road and we may have a part two. Like I said, I only have six of these replacement FETs. Now I did change, I think four of them in the previous video and it worked perfectly on my bench. It's been almost a year ago since I repaired this unit because I did actually sign it with the date 10 of 2021, it is now 9 of 2022, and this thing has failed. I mean, look at the carnage, even on the heat sink, you can see the smoke marks up on there. So I'm gonna contact the customer and see if they wanna go ahead and invest a little bit more into this unit. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the labor at no charge, but the customer will have to pay for parts at a minimum 32 driver FETs. So hopefully there will be a part two on this. I'm not sure. We'll see what the customer has to say. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, please hit that subscribe button and like this video. It lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job at presenting these repair videos to you. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I have a full-time job, and I do these repairs in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this diagnostic video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Stand by for bloopers. Okay, so this is the master side of the inverter. Let's go ahead and check the fuses right here. That one is good. Hard to see, but it is zero ohms. That one's open. That one's open. That one's good. Open. Let's check it again. Yes, open. That one is open. That one is open. And that one is open as well. Uh, let's take that again without a bunch of distortion in the video. Yeah, that'll work. All right, take two. So let's just... So yeah, remember the first part of the video? So remember in the first video, I found that this had been arcing and that's what caused the initial problem and I see no evidence of arcing. Maybe I should have put a dab of silicone on that, but I think it's absolutely perfect right now. I don't see any issues with that. Okay, let's take that again with autofocus so it'll track, doggone it. Go ahead and You can email me, norcal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at norcal715. Okay, let's do that again. It was in the wrong order, doggone it. You can follow me on social... Really? And I do these, and I do these repairs. Really?